your turbo engine might be down on power. You might be losing boost. You might assume it's the turbocharger at fault, but the reality is often the turbocharger itself is fine. There's lots of other components. In this video, we're going to look at the many causes of a loss of turbo pressure that aren't directly related to the turbocharger itself. I've seen so many people go out and buy a new turbocharger only to have exactly the same problem, a loss of pressure. It might just mean that the car is not as powerful as it once was. It might be throwing error codes. You might even have annoying flat spots and a sudden loss of acceleration. Understanding the turbocharger, we'll assume that we've got a basic knowledge of how the turbocharger works. It's compressing the air that goes into the engine. And from the turbocharger, you've got a compressed tube or intake pipe of air that goes into the engine. That goes through the intercooler. If there's a split anywhere in this pipe, when that boost pressure reaches a certain threshold, the threshold of the split or the crack is going to escape. You're going to lose that boost pressure. In those instances, you'll often find that the car drives fine until you go full throttle and the boost starts rising up and it goes beyond that threshold point. These sudden losses of pressure at certain points in the RPM are usually down to splits somewhere in the intake. It's worth checking all of the connections between hoses. Some cars use a lot of plastic and rubber. Some people have replaced the rubber with silicon and the plastic clips that you get have been replaced with better quality metal clips. It's certainly worth investing in upgrading the pipework on our car if we're running quite high boost or we demand a lot of our turbocharger. It'll just ensure the long-term reliability if we do that. Now, the turbocharger is controlled by a boost solenoid. The mechanism for controlling the turbo is fairly complex and varied between manufacturer to manufacturer. But essentially, the exhaust gases are restricted as they go into the turbocharger. If that solenoid that's controlling this wastegate is damaged in some way, it can actually prevent the wastegate from fully opening. It can prevent the turbo from reaching full boost. It might be sticking open. It might be sticking closed. This can actually be down to faulty wiring or a faulty vacuum hose rather than the unit itself. A lot of cars do have typical problems with the boost control solenoid valve. And if your car has this reputation, if you check online and you see that this is a common fault, it could well be down to that common issue. They're not that expensive to replace. They're not that difficult to replace either. So I would certainly probably start there if you suspected that the turbo wastegate wasn't spooling up fast enough or giving enough boost from the turbo. Most turbo engines have an intercooler, so any restriction in the intercooler, you'll be surprised how much gunk builds up in a modern intercooler, but that can actually restrict the flow through the intercooler. It's probably quite unusual to have that as a major problem, a major loss of boost, but we can't dismiss that. If you pop off the hoses at the bottom and just look at the condition of them, if it's full of sludge and oil and gunk, then you found the problem. If it still looks fairly clear, we need to move on to other areas. Your modern engine is filled with sensors. You've got the mass airflow sensor, various intake sensors, they just monitor the air that's going into the engine, the temperature, the quantity of air. The engine's computer needs this information in order to produce the calculations it needs to run efficiently and deliver the power that you require. If any of those sensors are playing up, that can lead to a loss of boost pressure. The engine might think it's getting more air or less air than it is, and the turbo is either overworking itself or it's underworking itself just because you're getting these wrong readings. You also have a throttle position sensor and a whole host of other sensors within the engine. In most cases, you will get an error. When you connect to the OBD2 port, you can download an error code, and that error code generally will get you looking in the right place for the issue or the problem. The hardest thing to track down is the intermittent boost problems. So the questions we need to ask really is, is it happening at a set point in the RPM range? If it is, you've got some kind of boost leak. Is it consistent? Does it always happen when you lift off the throttle or when you first go on the throttle? Does it take a while to pick up? That could mean that something is sticking and not opening as fully or as completely as it otherwise is. 
and checking the error codes will reveal if there are any problems within the sensors around the engine itself. Hopefully this video has saved you some money and helped you to diagnose your loss of boost problem. Please boot the like button because that really does help us to get out there. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. A lot of you aren't subscribed yet and you'll miss out on all the great content we've got planned. And I've lined this video and this playlist up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in these next videos.